Iceland started their stopover program for those traveling to Europe. It opened up a whole new world for those wanting to cross off multiple travel destinations in one trip. But it's not the only location we're stopping for. Uh, that's right. Our next guest is here to tell us about some of the best stopover cities and what we can do there for just a few days. Everyone, please welcome back to the show travel expert Jennifer Weatherhead. <laughs> Jennifer, okay, so I'm gonna be the Debbie Downer and start things off. <laughs> I think of a stopover as part of a very long flight, and my other worry is that they're gonna lose my luggage, but yeah. you say we don't have to dread a stopover. No, no, no. Explain no. why. I have some tips for you. First of all, a stopover is a great idea because you get to break up that long flight, ah. right? So you get a nice little break in between. It's kind of a two-for-one vacation, too, because you get to see another destination. True. And sometimes it's cheaper to do these connecting flights. Airlines offer these things. A lot of airlines offer package deals stopover package deal specifically, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit to inspire you. Okay. But the other thing that you wanna do, you wanna keep a couple things in mind. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure that your destination is close to the airport, so it's easy to get yeah. to. You want yeah. something that's easy. You wanna make sure that whatever your destination is is compact and it's easy to explore. So a compact downtown, compact neighborhood to explore. Gotcha. And the other thing is, ideally, you wanna do a carry-on only. Fair. Ideally. Fair. I'm but, what? I do carry-on. But you don't you, do carry-on? I only do carry-on. Oh, great. But if you do check your bag, the idea here is to put all of the things that you need for your stopover in your carry-on bag, so that way you're not unpacking and repacking yeah. absolutely everything. Love okay. I love it. Okay. Okay. So you're going to yeah. suggest some uh, stopover locations. I have to admit, I was kind of against this idea, but I remembered mm -hmm. that when I went to Egypt, we did a stopover in Greece, and it was mm -hmm. one of those ones where you just sort of get to go to the hotel, I think it was a six hour, we got to nap, and then we got back refreshed, had a shower, whatever, and carried on. So this suggestion you have first is in the same part of the world. Tell yes. us about it. So I'm suggesting Istanbul as a stopover city because it is an incredible city. It actually goes across two continents, Asia and Europe as well. So it's a very historic city, oh, but you can connect through here. Beautiful. It's a major hub going to Africa, the Middle East, any other place in Europe. But what's really great is that Turkish Airlines has a stopover program. So they will pick you up at the airport, take you to your hotel, and take you on a full day tour. Oh, wow! So they have different wow. options. So you get to see some of the most incredible sites that Istanbul has to offer. So we're talking about the Blue Mosque, which is super iconic and something that you need to see when you're there. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, you can see it right there. It's so beautiful. It's just a must to go see. The inside is incredible. And then we also have the Serpentine Column, which is also very iconic and famous in the city. And we also have another mass, the Hag Hagia Sophia Mosque is a beautiful setting. I mean, oh, if you look, look at, at it that. right now, <gasps> stunning inside, so much history here. You can go to neighborhoods as well. There's a beautiful, colorful, artsy neighborhood called Balat. It's incredible too. And then we also have the Grand Bazaar. We just showed oh it there. Gosh. Make sure you go there and stunning. get some Turkish delights <laughs> oh. before to take you, you know, onto your next destination. And then there's even a beautiful river cruise that you can do on the Bosphorus. So this Bosphorus River is what separates the two continents in the city. So do this at night as the sun oh. is setting, the lights are coming on, you go underneath all of these bridges. It's so romantic. So oh my love. I love that. I amazing. want to take two weeks in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, I, like the rest of the world, am very curious about Portugal. It feels like everyone's going there these days. And it looks like a dream. And you have a recommendation for the perfect Portuguese stopover. I do. What I'm going to take us to Porto because this is a beautiful mm. part of Portugal that I really like. And you can get to pretty much anywhere in Europe from here. And there are a lot of airlines that do fly into Portugal, but TAP Airlines specifically has a great stopover program where you can stay for up to 10 days on either side of your trip. Oh. So this is oh. really convenient. It means that you can stop and explore the beautiful city of Porto on your way to someplace else in Europe. So this is also a great wine region, which is incredible. So you want to make sure that you're experiencing all of that great wine culture while you're there. All right, so you have 48 hours in Porto. What are the best ways to experience that city? Okay, so first of all, you're gonna stay at the Yateman Hotel. So this is a very iconic Ooh. property. It's on this <coughs> hill, it's on the other side of the river. So you get the river views plus the views of the city while you're there. The rooms have great views as well. You can also have breakfast on the balcony looking out over the river, a cocktail at sunset. They even have a pool that is in the shape of a decanter. Oh. We are in wine country here. <laughs> right? yes. Definitely in wine country here. And the other thing, speaking of wine, you are right across the street from one of Portugal's most famous wineries, Taylor Flatgate. Yeah. You can go over there for about 20 euros. You can do a wine tasting at your leisure. 
But then, I mean, let's let, just do wine. Let's do some food tours as well. I love doing a food walking tour and Porto is perfect for this. I did one with Taste Porto food tours and I have to say it's one of my favorite food tours that I've ever done anywhere wow. in the world. They have so much knowledge and history. You get huge portions, pastries, sandwiches, soups, all the wine you could think of. These guys know what they're doing, okay? Because they took Anthony Bourdain. Whoa. around wow. when he visited the okay. city. So they know their food. And then let's just keep with the wine theme and top it all off by doing a beautiful Duro River cruise for a day. Oh, so you leave the city, you go underneath oh. those iconic bridges, you go into the Duro Valley, stunning landscape. You stop at a little town called Pinyao. You'll do another wine tasting there and then you hop on a private bus and go back into the city. Oh. Perfection, <laughs> perfection. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going from my dad's motherland uh -huh. to my mother's. Oh. Yes. Motherland. <laughs> I've always wanted, uh, Philippines is on my list and I haven't been yet, shockingly. But Southeast Asia, there are so many other places to visit there. So what's the stopover city in Southeast Asia? Well, if you're considering to go anywhere in Asia or even off to Australia, Singapore is such a great stopover city because oh. it's really convenient. It's very manageable in terms of an Asian city to explore. Another great thing is that Air Canada is now going to have a direct flight from Vancouver starting April 3rd, four times a week. So it makes it super easy Whoa. to get there. But when you are there, it's just a really cool cultural hub to explore. That's amazing. Okay, so Beautiful. we have even more time to play in Singapore with 72 hours. So yes. what would you suggest we get up to in that time? Yes, yeah, so again, I think what we want to do while we're there in 72 hours, we want to splurge a little bit. I mean, we need to get over some jet lag, right? So we're going to stay at the Raffles Hotel, which is a beautiful luxury property. It's in this Ooh. gorgeous colonial building. Mm -hmm. It's in this area called the Civic District, which is kind of the cultural and historic hub of Singapore. So it's a really great spot to kind of be central. And they have great restaurants there as well. So when you're there, you can also visit the National Gallery. They have the largest collection of Southeast Asian art. Oh, wow. So make sure you check that out. But the other thing that Singapore is really known for is being one of the greenest cities in the world. So over 50% of the city is covered in green space. Whoa! So you want to take advantage of this and explore some of that. So we have the Singapore Botanical Garden, which is incredible. Look it's really that. beautiful. Oh. I mean, what a way to be jet lag. You can no. see <laughs> through this area. They have an orchid garden here as well. It's the largest collection of orchids, 60,000 wow. orchids and plants wow. that are in here. And then we also have the super tree at Marina Bay. So these are these famous trees that oh, you'll see yeah. on social media Seems all like the movies. time. Movies yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a gorgeous <coughs> thing to check out. And of course you can't be here and not really explore kind of that buzzy street culture that they have. So you want to make sure that you go to visit Chinatown and the Bugay, Bugay Night Market, which is really, really incredible. That's a lot of fun. You'll get great food. You can bargain for some great souvenirs while you're there. So it's a great way to kind of soak up all of that culture before you head off to your next destination. So, I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's all we have time for, but boy, I'm like writing yeah. all of these down <laughs> for my next stopover. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.